Good morning, Church. Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ on this beautiful Sunday morning. Welcome to our online service again. Peace be with you. As we come this morning, let us be assured that our God has chosen to bless us individually and corporately as a church. In our Lord's Prayer found in John 17, verse 22 and 23, Jesus prayed, I have given them the glory you gave me, so they may be one as we are one. I am in them and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. Let us remember the grace and protection abound to us to keep us safe in this pandemic. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us be humble and obedient as we come before our God. This morning's service is conducted in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us come before the Lord, our Maker. For He is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. All of us are born into sin. We are the seed of disobedience. But God has a plan for us through Jesus Christ. Therefore, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess together. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of the Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives all our sin. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Lord, thank you that you grant Holy Spirit to be the wonderful counselor, the best friend with us at this time on the earth. We thank you and we invite Holy Spirit to be with us right now. Come, Holy Spirit, 
Good morning. Thank you for staying with us in this online worship service. And as you have been faithfully following our worship service, I believe you will be blessed by the Lord. Now, perhaps some of you will ask that, how do I know? You know, how do I know I will be blessed by the Lord? Well, it's all because the Word of God says so. In fact, the passage that we're going through, we'll be going uh, through this morning. Uh, from the book of Ephesians. He says that for all who are in Christ Jesus, all those who believe in Jesus Christ, those are in Christ, you are richly blessed with every spiritual being. That is when the word of God says, you will be blessed because it says so. Therefore, we know it shall, and it, in fact, it already happened that we are blessed by the Lord. Because the Bible, Word of God reminds us in Matthew says that heaven and earth will pass away, but my word, God's word, will never pass away. It means that God's word is reliable. God's word is trustworthy. When the world will come to the end, even when the world, everything will be destroyed, God's word will never be destroyed. His word will remain. Therefore, we can trust we can put our faith. And when the word of God says, you will be blessed, we will be blessed. Amen. And this morning, we want to turn uh, to the passage uh, from Ephesians chapter 1, starting from verse 3 to verse 14. Yeah, And uh, Ephesians chapter 1, let me begin by reading to you, starting from verse 3 to verse 14. Verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual being, uh, spiritual blessings in the heavenly places, even as He chooses us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before Him. In love, He predestined us for adoption to Himself as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of His will, to the praise and His glorious grace with which he has blessed us in His beloved. In Him, we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of His grace, which He lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of His will according to His purpose, which He set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in Him things in heaven and things on earth. Verse 11 says, In Him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of Him who works all things according to the counsel of His will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of His glory. In Him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation and believe in Him was sealed with the promised Holy Spirit who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possessions of it to praise of His glory. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank You, Lord, once again for this morning. As we turn to Your Word, Father, Lord, we continue to pray. Lord, Your Word will bless us. Not just uh, hearing of Your Word, but I pray faith will bow. We pray and ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now this letter, written by Paul to the people to the, in Ephesus, now this is a very different uh, kind of letter co as compared to many of the other letters in the New Testament uh, Paul wrote uh, to the people. Like, like for instance, like Romans or, you know, Ephesians was, it was not written so much to address the problems in a particular church, but it was written to explain some of the very important fundamental 
the, the foundation of Christian faith, you know, and it has many great things and doctrines of the Christianity. And it is, you know, emphasis, and, and, and this is the emphasis of the uh, Lutheran Church in Malaysia, uh, the liturgical emphasis, especially for the next couple of weeks. Therefore, I, as the uh, next couple of weeks, my preaching will be based on efficient. Here, Paul made a great, you know, when he began, he made a great acclamation of God's goodness at the very beginning of his letter. And this set the tone for the rest of the letter to the Christians in Ephesus. And Paul called, you know, for a blessing upon God. You know, he talked about the blessing of God. You know, in a sense that, you know, he recognized that his, his glory, God's glory and honor and his goodness. And he praised God and he praised God because the Lord had blessed believers with every spiritual blessings. Here he says, Blessed be the God of the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ. Who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual being in the heavenly places. When Paul uses the word us, he's inclusive of himself. Now, when Paul wrote this, of course, we know that he wrote this uh, when he used the word us, he's talking about the, he has the people, uh, the Christians in the first century in mind. But this letter, although, you know, when Paul wrote this, he had the people in the first century in mind. This letter also meant for us today in the 21st century. For every believers, we talk about all believers in Christ Jesus, regardless of law, which century that the, 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 we belongs to. We are part of God's eternal plan, His eternal purposes. And we need to know one truth. This is a, a, important. That we need to know that God is aiming that everyone, every living being on earth, His goal is to bring about a world that feel with blessings. His aim that the whole world will fill with His blessings. He wants everyone to be saved. He wants everyone to come to the knowledge of the truth. In, in, in 2 Peter tells, uh, Timothy says that it is God's desire, His aim that everyone will come to salvation to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And the salvation and the knowledge can only obtain through Jesus Christ, which is the mediator between God of the universe, between God of this universe and man, only through Jesus Christ. But unfortunately, not everyone are willing to believe. Not everyone are willing to trust and put their faith in Jesus and accept Him as Savior, as Lord. But the Bible reminds us that those who believe in Him, those are in Him, those who are responded to Him, we are called blessed. Amen? And in this passage in Ephesians, there are three major emphases in Paul's message. The first part of it from Ephesians uh, chapter 1, verse 3 to verse 6, it, it, it tells us that, that we are chosen. People, we are chosen by God. Paul began to extol these marvelous uh, spiritual blessings and he emphasized how God the Father and uh, chooses us to, to belong to Him at the very beginning. It, and even he says that before the foundation of the world, in other words, before the world has come into being, before the foundation of the world, they're already chosen. People are already chosen by God. We didn't choose God. It is He. He chooses us. He chooses us to be His children, to be His child. And this is what the uh, theological, we call this the doctrine of elections. Now, this is a very comforting thing because it reassures us that even our coming in faith, uh, our faith in Jesus Christ is about God's doing. It is not about us. It, is, it does not depend on us. It does not depend on our strength. 
on our skill, on our intelligence. Because if it depends on us, then we are in trouble. Because our mind can never fathom the mystery of God. We can never come to the full knowledge of God, of, of Christ. It, it is never about us. It never depends on us. If it's always depend on us, then I can tell you, no one in this world can come to God. We can never find God in our lifetime. They may exhaust all their resources, all their whatever that they, they know, they can still far away from the Almighty. But the Bible says, it is not us who choose Him. It's not that we, we, we have found Him, but He found us. He chooses us. And His choice was not based on our ability. His, ba- His choice is not based on our, our, our capability. It's purely solely by His grace. It's God's free gift. And this, this doctrinal uh, doctrine of election that God chooses us is one of those spiritual blessings which God has already blessed us. And that's the reason why the Bible reminds us that, you know, that we had to come to praise Him. And that's the reason why we Christians, Sunday, we gather, we worship the Lord. And in fact, we don't have to wait until Sunday. We should be thanking Him. We should be uh, worshipping Him every day of our life. That is the reason. That is one of the very important core reasons why we worship the Lord. Why we, we thank Him. We, we, we glorify Him. Because it is He who first chose us. That even though in spite of us, and some of us, many of us, we recognize that there's nothing good about myself. There's nothing great about me. Yet, in spite of that many uh, weaknesses that we have, He chose us. And that's why we have to praise Him. That's why we thank Him. That's why we honor Him. In spite of what we have, or even in spite of what we are going through, we praise Him because He chooses us. Amen. And second important things that he mentioned here, from verse 7 to verse 10, he reminds us that we are all redeemed in Christ. We are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are redeemed in Christ. The word in Him, when Paul used the word in Him, means that he was talking about in the Lord, in Christ, in Christ alone. And Paul repeated this key phrase over and over again in many of his, his letters to the people, to the Christians. And this is the key. And this is the very important, the key in Christianity. Christianity is not a religion. It is about a relationship with Christ Jesus, our Lord. You can be in a church. You can be doing all the Christian thing. You can be be a nice person, do a lot of charity, helping others. You may be giving faithfully, giving offering, reading the Bible. All these are good. You can be doing all kinds of things. You can even preach the gospel. You can even tell people about about Jesus Christ. But if we, if you and I don't believe in Him, if we don't remain in Him, then if we are not in Christ, then you have nothing. It is not a religion. It is not about doing all the Christian things. It's about remain in the Lord. It is about trusting. It is about having faith in the person of Jesus Christ. Our salvation comes to us only in connection with Christ. It, apart from Him, there is no salvation. Apart from Him, there is no truth. In Him, in Christ, we have every spiritual being. And this, this salvation, you know, uh, you know that, that actually God had already planned for mankind before the beginning, before the foundation of the world. And this was accomplished 
in time of human history with the coming of Jesus Christ into the world. And Paul called it the redemption. He used the word redemption. The word redemption means release. We have been released from the bondage by a payment, by a certain kind of price that he have to pay. Because of the sin, because of transgressions, we are all in bondage, unable to free ourselves. We are a debtor. There is nothing we can do. There's no, not enough things that we can do to pay that price. We can't pay ourselves to get out of that bondage, to get out of that slavery of sins or, or the, the, the dominion of the evil one from Satan. No amount of offering, no amount of good works or charity can actually release us from the bondage of sins. But because of God's great mercy, because of His great love, He came to our rescue. He redeemed us. He has set us free through and by the blood of Jesus Christ, His own God, very own Son. And while man, the Bible says, because our sins, our transgression, we are all fallen short of God's glory. We are destined to be punished for our sins. But Christ took upon himself the punishment of man that, you know, that supposed to for man. That punishment he took upon himself when he suffered and died so that our sins can be forgiven so that we can be set free. That is the price that he paid. Yeah? And it is in him we receive that forgiveness. It is through his blood we are redeemed. We are set free from the eternal punishment, the eternal death. You know? And that now we have been set on a path to eternal, e eternal life. My friends, any one of you, are you still weighing down by your sins? Are you still troubled by your sins? Come to the Lord. Come to Him. And when you come to Him, you will receive your forgiveness. His blood has set you free and His blood will set you free. And because through His blood, you are redeemed. When you put your faith in Christ, you are redeemed in Christ. And that is the spiritual be, uh, spiritual blessings that God already planned for everyone. Oh, if only you receive it. Amen. We are chosen by God. We are redeemed by Jesus Christ. And third thing that Paul reminds us here, that we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. From verse 11 to verse 14, he tells us that we are sealed by the Spirit. Christ has won for us this wonderful inheritance that is the eternally, eternity, eternal life with God and in, 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 in forever and ever. He has won it for us through His death and by His resurrection. We have won that victory over, over sins and over death. However, however, our body are still subject to decaying and subject to, to physical death. Though by Christ's death and resurrection, we have this wonderful inheritance of eternity, but we have yet to possess it fully. But it is when we are sealed by the Holy Spirit, when we choose to believe in Him, when we are baptized in Christ, we have sealed, this truth has been sealed by the Holy Spirit. And this, this, this seal guarantee of our inheritance that until we have, uh, one day we have the full possession, even though we have not have the full possession of it even now, but it is guaranteed we will have it. That, that possessions, that it, it, the Holy Spirit that guarantee us that, that, that inheritance will be with us when Christ returns. And that seal, you know, it, it is like a down payment. You know, when Christ comes again, salvation is fully realized. By right now, of course, right now, 
you and I have been sealed with the Holy Spirit. When we trust, when we put our faith, the Bible says, when we trust Him, when we believe in Him, we are sealed by the Holy Spirit and we guarantee us that we can have this inheritance. And because of this, we can look into the future with, with assurance and with confidence that we have the ownership of the inheritance of eternity. Everything is at hand. And indeed, because of this guarantee, because we are saved by the Holy Spirit, it is a blessing. It is indeed a blessing. Because no one, no political party, no uh, any systems that in this world can give such assurance, can give such a freedom, or can give us salvation. Only in Christ and Christ alone and sealed by the Holy Spirit. Only in Christ and in Christ alone, we have these wonderful blessings. And these blessings are not subject to the scrutiny of, of, of science, uh, nor it is they are available to the philosophy of man. Such blessings are only found in Christ and Christ alone. It is not an activity of man, but it is the work of God. It is the act of God. It is the gift from the Almighty. It is not something that God is going to do. It's something that is already, He already has done it. We have been chosen. We have chosen by God. We are redeemed by Christ. And now we know we have sealed by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, and that's the reason why we should not stop worshipping the Lord. We should not stop thanking Him. We should not stop coming before our Lord Jesus Christ. For He deserves all our highest praise and glory. And we are to magnify His name forever and evermore. Amen. Let us pray. Once again, Father, we pray that you will take away the dimness from our vision, the dullness of um, our understanding, and help us to comprehend these great things which have changed the history of the world again and again, as men have grasped them. Save us from uh, the fully of taking them for granted Help us, Lord, that to think deeply and seriously about these great statements, to understand that this is the way, Lord, that you have, that you are acting, and this is the cause of your movement through history. Lord, help us by your grace to rejoice. Help us to lay hold of your provision and to be responsive instruments in your hand, Lord. We thank you. And we praise you, Father, that we know once again, Lord, that you have chosen us and you have redeemed us. And our inheritance of eternity has been sealed with the Holy Spirit. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Marcus, for expounding God's message to us. We are thankful that He has not only given us physical food, but also spiritual food. For it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word from our Lord. It is reassuring to know that we are held in the palm of His hand. Let us confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
We have much to be thankful for even in this difficult time. We are assuredly adopted as children of God and are bestowed with His glorious grace and favour. In return, we choose to work out the manifestation of your commandment to love our neighbours. We return a portion of the blessings that you have blessed us for the furtherance of your kingdom. You may remit the amount that God purposed in your heart into the account listed below. Kindly indicate clearly the causes you intend to bless. God loves a cheerful giver. We pray that your offerings will touch and transform lives in accordance with His will. Now, let us pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Thank you that you are still remaining with us in our online worship service. A quick reminder to all of us, as we look at today, Malaysia, the COVID-19 cases, 8,000, 9,000, and more than 10,000 cases for the last couple of days. The situation uh, has, uh, has turned worse. In fact, some uh, the, the medical uh, expert and, and, and already mentioned that uh, the worst has yet to come. But times like this, Let's not become fearful, although we know situation uh, is, doesn't seem to be very pleasant. Let's not be fearful, but be watchful, but be prayerful. So if any one of you still undecided to whether to, to, to get vaccine or not, uh, please register yourself, please do so, yeah, for the good of yourself and also for the love of your family members. And please uh, stay at home as much as possible. If there's a need for you to go out, please wear your mask, uh, double masking. In, in fact, now they advise us, yeah, and uh, keep social distancing and uh, do all the necessary thing for the good of yourself, to protect yourself, and also uh, for your for the good of your family members, yeah. Meanwhile, continue to pray for situation, not only here in Malaysia, but also see uh, in other parts like Indonesia, many other countries as well. Yeah, continue to pray that God will intervene, that uh, we know situation doesn't seem to be uh, very pleasant, but we pray that God, we pray for God's mercy. We pray, we plead for his, his grace upon uh, from us, especially for the people who have lost their family members, pray for God's comfort and peace upon them. Amen. Meanwhile, also remember uh, other things, other places like South Africa, recently having this uh, violence, continue to pray that the, this situation will come, uh, will be under control. Amen. And right now by faith, Let's receive the Lord's benediction. May the loving power of God, which raised Jesus to new life, strengthens you in hope, enrich you in His love, and fill you with the joy in the faith in Jesus Christ. May His every blessings, favor, and peace surround you from this day forth and forevermore. In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless all of you. And I will we'll be seeing you again next Sunday. God bless. Bye-bye.